Hello, I'm James Duffy. I'm the producer of this DVD package covering the ME-163 aircraft. We're about to see a series of films here highlighting the development of bipropellant rocket motors in Germany in the years before and during World War II. Uh, most of this research was done by an engineer by the name of Helmuth Walter. He did a great deal of research on engines that would not require an external oxygen source. Uh, he concentrated primarily on developing these power sources, not for aircraft, but for submarines. Walter called the concept AIP, or Air Independent Propulsion. Uh, he felt that hydrogen peroxide would be a suitable fuel. If the right catalyst was added to hydrogen peroxide, that would break down into oxygen and steam at a very high temperature. That heat from the reaction and the steam could be used to drive a turbine and in turn uh, propel something such as a submarine. Walter also realized that uh, an additional fuel could be injected into that very violent reaction to provide additional power. Uh, he patented that idea in 1925. We're going to see that particular idea resurface when we discuss the difference between hot and cold bipropellant motors. The German Navy actually tested a small submarine called the V-80 with an AIP power plant, and it hit a uh, top speed of 23 knots. Fairly impressive. Ultimately, the German Navy determined that uh, producing hydrogen peroxide in, in adequate quantities, and even more challenging, storing it, would prevent this from ever really being a viable option for powering submarines. So, where did Walter turn his research next? To aircraft and rocket power on aircraft. He pushed the concept of a bipropellant rocket engine not only to power the DFS-194 and the ME-163A series, but Walter rocket engines were also used as JATO, jet-assisted takeoff, or RATO, rocket-assisted takeoff, auxiliary motors on conventional aircraft. The DFS-194 rocket-propelled aircraft used an early version of a Walter rocket motor that used a material called T-stuff, or hydrogen peroxide in water, and Z-stuff, uh, which was a concentrated solution of sodium or calcium permanganate. Those two, when mixed together and ignited, would produce a very violent reaction. Both the DFS-194 and the ME-163A used this so-called cold engine to produce power. Later versions, the upgraded versions, is used in a couple of the later 163As and the 163B used what's called a hot engine. This used the T-stuff that was used earlier and C-stuff, which was a mixture of hydrazine hydrate, methyl alcohol, and water as propellant. It's important to note that the hydrogen peroxide used in all versions of these bipropellant motors is very, very dangerous stuff. It could actually melt flesh and pilots had to wear protective clothing to protect them in the event of a crash. If a 163 crashed with fuel in its tanks, if a tank ruptured, it could actually melt the flesh off the pilot's bones. This did actually happen, and uh, there were some very gruesome deaths during the testing process of the ME-163. The DFS-194 engine that you saw at the early portion of this film was especially difficult to work on. The DFS-194 was built around a tube frame and the engine was literally buried inside that tube frame. If work needed to be done on the engine, and it needed to be done a lot, crews literally had to disassemble the aircraft around the engine to gain access to any portion of the motor. Ease of maintenance was a very significant portion of the design of later Walter engines. You'll notice during the middle portion of this particular film that there is a star-shaped engine mount used on that particular Walter engine. It was a very simple matter to remove the rear end of the ME-163 and unbolt that motor from the aircraft and its fuel tanks. Development of the so-called hot motor was going so slowly at the Walter plant at one point that the German Air Ministry, or RLM, decided to hedge their bets and asked BMW to begin parallel development of a similar motor. What we're seeing here at the tail end of this film is testing of the BMW motor. 
it's fairly easy to tell the difference between the BMW and Walter engines. The Walter engine uses the very distinctive star-shaped engine mount at the forward end of the motor, while the BMW engine uses a cradle-style mount that we're about to see here as the tail is removed from this ME163. It's interesting to note that in the post-war years, the Royal Navy in Great Britain did testing of a couple of subs using AIP engines that were developed by Helmut Walter. The testing was reasonably successful, but it was decided in the long run that nuclear power held a great deal more potential for use in submarines. In 1950, Walter eventually immigrated to the United States where he worked as a researcher for an engineering company. An interesting postscript to all of this is that the company that bears his name, the Walter Company, is actually still in business. That particular company ended up in the Russian-controlled portion of Germany and spent the years following the war developing turbine engines for use in aircraft. These turboprop engines are noted for their reliability. They're used throughout the former Soviet bloc countries and throughout Africa and interestingly enough are starting to be used to replace American-made engines on board American turboprop aircraft such as King Airs. As this film comes to an end we've got a shot here of the BMW engine and it's uh, notable for that very distinctive engine mount that actually cradles the engine. 